We picked up this table for $12 at the thrift store. We're gonna show you how to use DIYs, cottage color, two different ways to do a faux stain and paint the bottom. When I'm sanding a tabletop or top of a dresser or something, this looks like it's solid wood. So I'm just gonna sand it. I'm starting out with an 80 grit and then I'll work my way up through the grits there. I'll probably end at 220. So this has kind of like a weird top. It's like solid wood on the end, but not. There's like a plywood veneer situation happening here. And I sanded down through it. I thought it was just gonna be all solid wood. That's something to note. When you're doing veneer and you know it's veneer for sure, you wanna go with maybe a lighter grit. I had some 80 grit. You can see I switched to a fresh pad and right here it got a little thin and right here it got a little thin. We have a good fix for this and we'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So I wanna go for kind of a Gustavian finish. I'm gonna show you how to use our DIY cottage colors, gray skies, two ways. The first is we're gonna paint the bottom gray. Then we're going to take some of the cottage colors water down and make a faux stain. Zeb found a few veneer issues on the top and that will kind of hide it. Cottage colors is all natural and has a built-in sealer. So we'll probably only have to do about two coats and then we'll be ready to go. We won't have to seal it or anything. Although I'm, pro you know me, I'm never just gonna do one color. I'm thinking like a white wash Gustavian finish, we'll see. Cottage color is perfect for this because it's all natural and it's self-leveling. So I can brush it on with my brush, but then most of the brush strokes will go away once it dries. To find the paint and products you see us use here today, visit jamierayvintage.com. So we're gonna start with the faux stain on the top. I actually had to rescue this out of the garbage can. Zeb threw it away. There was a little bit of paint down in the bottom, like, you know, where it's hard to get out and brush. That's the perfect time to save it for a wash. I just added some water to the little bit of paint that was down here, and I'm gonna do a faux stain. So you brush it on, and then you wipe it back. And then you brush it on, and you wipe it back. And I have a damp, lint-free rag, and this way you get faux stain. Faux real. All right, so here is one coat of the watered down gray stain. I think it turned out pretty awesome. I don't know the exact ratio. Let's just say like 10 to one, practice it. If it's too light, I always say add a little bit of water, try it because you can always water it down more, but if it's all the paint you have left, you can't add more back to it. So just do a little at a time till you get the look that you want. So I am second coating this and I'm getting pretty great coverage once I'm done with this we will be ready to distress and maybe add a whitewash. While the base is drying, I'm going to do a whitewash on the top and then once the base is dry, I'll do the same. So DIY's cottage colors, DIY's cottage colors watered down with, it looks kind of like milk. I used white linen and I'm just gonna layer on this whitewash. And it's just gonna gently tone that gray back and give us a, a barn wood look. One critical thing I forgot to tell you is that you need to make sure you stir up the white linen because it has a built-in sealer and it tends to separate in shipment. There we go. I was wondering why that wasn't as white as I wanted it to be.
Make sure you're wiping with the grain of the wood, otherwise it's gonna look weird. I am gonna show you how to distress this. I was gonna do a whitewash and I decided why not keep it simple. If you don't like distressed paint, then you just leave it all nice and silky smooth and you don't have to do anything else. I like a little wear. So I'm just gonna lightly hit this with 220 sandpaper. You do not wanna use like a 60 or 80 grit, especially with this built-in sealer. A 220 is where it's at. Here's a really big tip. If you haven't let your paint sit overnight, it's still gonna be a little bit tacky. So just be careful to sand lightly. Don't press too hard. The good news is if you take off more than you want, you can just brush right over it. Has a built-in sealer, easy peasy. The last step, we only have to seal the top because the base is all painted, has a built-in sealer. I'm using DIY's Big Top. It lays really flat, so if I'm brushing, this is one of my favorite sealers. It's gonna give it about a satin finish and it will make the colors a little bit richer. We do need to put two to three coats on top because this is a sofa table. Who knows what people are gonna put on it? Maybe they'll use it as a buffet table. So you wanna make sure it's pretty waterproof and then don't use your piece for a week. Be careful for the first 30 days while the sealer cures up. It's all natural and water-based and it'll come right off my brush with soap and water. Totally safe to seal inside. Even though I used the cottage colors with the built-in sealer as a faux stain, because I watered it down, it messes with the integrity of the sealer in the built-in sealer, so it needs more top coat. Hopefully that makes sense. That's bringing the colors out real good though. Yeah. It was fun today to show you two ways to use the cottage colors and how really simple it is to paint a piece in an afternoon. This is kind of an old school JRV finish. We haven't done one with this kind of faux top in a long time, but this was the perfect candidate for it. Comment below if you like how this turned out and if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you want to shop the products used today, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.